David Murray came to Pomona College at a time when the college was making a conscientious effort to recruit bright minority students from the inner cities. A lot of other kids didn't get in that year. Black, white, brown, Asian, red, yellow. David was happy to be here. In his year and a half here at Pomona, he was exposed for the first time to the older, ongoing tradition in jazz music, all the way up to, at that point, the cutting edge, as some of my History of Jazz students now smiling about this. <laughs> While studying here under the tutorship of Stanley Crouch and myself and David playing in the jazz band, his interest moved toward jazz music. I have no idea what his intentions were when he first arrived as a, as a freshman. But growing up in Northern California, David came here with a strong and rich background in Afro-Christian church music and in soul music and in rhythm and blues, one sacred, one secular, but two musics very much the same, except for the text. Some equipment that would serve David well in the uh, future, the career that waited for him. He came in 1973, David left in 1975, saxophone in hand, and headed for New York. He arrived in New York, a 20-year-old, and found jazz in a state of revolution and much of the society on the heels of giant figures like Ornette Coleman and John Coltrane. He began by taking part in the now famous walk up loft jam sessions and was immediately recognized by critics and musicians alike as a brilliant new voice on the tenor saxophone and bass clarinet. His career has been nothing short of a shooting star. More than 150 albums and CDs in his own name, dozens more as a performer with other artists. He's the founder of the David Murray Octet, the World Saxophone Quartet, several other bands and genres not exactly jazz, but jazz related. He got the Bird Award in 1986, he became a Guggenheim Fellow in 1989. He got the Danish Jazz Par Award in 1991. Murray, the composer, has written for film, theater, dance, large and small ensemble, the list goes on. How has he managed all this, leaving Pomona in the middle of his sophomore year? <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> but we do know some of David's equipment is that here's a young man, not so young anymore, are you, David? Right. <laughs> David has an unerring ear for tune and time, a rich vocabulary in the music that surrounded him in his childhood, Afro-Christian church music, rhythm and blues, and soul music. He's daring. It took a lot of nerve to leave here in March of 1975. That was a hard choice. Seniors, think about it. Follow your heart, but don't leave your head behind. <laughs> David is here, a circuitous route to the stage for this degree. I'm so proud of him, I can't tell you how much. Once at a performance in New York, David said to the audience, I have my teacher here on the bandstand with me, and I want to be just like him when I grow up, he said to the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, on behalf of the Board of Trustees and the faculty of Pomona College, I am honored to present David Keith Murray for the honorary degree of Doctor of Letters. David Keith Murray, by the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Music in Pomona College, honoris causa.
Wow, okay. Thank you all. Um, thank you, Bobby. Uh, good morning, uh, graduates, uh, President Oxaby, and all of the alumni, and um, my family, who's, uh, I'm so happy they all came. This is an opportunity for us to have a family reunion. I live in Paris with my wife, Valerie, and our two kids. And um, so thanks for the family reunion as well. Um, I'd like to uh, dedicate this honorary degree to my father, the, the late Walter Pendleton Murray, and my mother, the late Catherine Hackett Murray, and also to my stepmother, who's here today, Verna Murray. And she came all the way from Midland, Texas for this. So. I would also like to thank uh, a gentleman who's no longer with us, Mr. John Payton, who was, who originally, yeah, I heard a year back there, okay. John Payton. <laughs> for his efforts and guidance as the Claremont College's admissions officer who initially recruited me to Pomona College from St. Mary's uh, College Prep High School. Also, um, Margaret Cohn, who was my piano teacher here. And her, her husband, who was a great a composer, Carl Cohn, for their dedication as well. She um, helped me to excel through uh, Bella Bartok's creations. And, and there's a few friends here I would also from, uh, the thing is about these colleges, I've, I've, I've met so many incredible people in those few semesters that I was here. One gentleman, Cedric Johnson from CMC, uh, he's, he's uh, just been honored recently um, at CMC for uh, his, his efforts in business. And also, um, also good friends, two other friends from CMC, uh, Clarence Anthony Bush, who is one of the head economists for the FCC in Washington. And he's, he's here today as well. Um, and also a, a, another gentleman from CMC, a um, friend of mine, Axel, he really is more like a, a brother, uh, attorney uh, Tim Wright. There he is over there. Now this gentleman, he's, uh, he, he hangs out with people like uh, Bill Clinton and uh, he he brought me over to South Africa during the uh, time of uh, the, uh, they were having a, a clinical trial on a cure for AIDS and he was spearheading it with funds from uh, great African American athletes. And um, that was, uh, he brought me as a music ambassador to uh, uh, entertain his trial. So that was wonderful. And uh, you just never know the kind of people that you meet here um, at these colleges. Uh, I, every time I think about it, it uh, it's just amazing how, how how many great people that I've met here. Um, Dr. William Russell, he was the head of the music department. I'm I'm very happy that he was able to. Uh, Dr. William Russell, you remember him? Yes, he he had the vision. To just, um, I think I might have been the only jazz musician here. I mean, like, it's not like uh, before, uh, now people can major in John Coltrane, but during that time, you couldn't do that. <laughs> so I'm very happy for that. Um, after three semesters of absorbing what Pomona offered, I developed an itch to go to New York, as Bobby said. Arthur Blythe, great saxophonist, had already left. And so I, I went to Dr. Russell, Professors Crouch and Bradford uh, to develop some independent studies courses for my fourth semester. Well, as it worked out, as spring turned to summer, I found myself totally immersed in the saxophone studies, and I found myself actually more like playing my horn. Uh, one friend told me, uh, Dewey Redman, he said, uh, Well, you know, David, I think you better, better put down the pencil and pick up your saxophone. Um, well, all I knew was that the window of opportunity was getting smaller. 
as things in New York, they changed very quickly. Of course, my father and his wife, Verna, were, they were upset at my decision to leave Pomona and stay in New York, but I had no chance. So after all, sending them all these records, all these awards and Grammys and this and that, um, they were like, well, okay. <laughs> um, What they really wanted was this Pomona College <laughs> diploma. <laughs> okay, well, well, as it turned out, it just took a lot longer to receive this. <laughs> Thanks to the support of all these incredibly talented people. I remember once I got on a plane, and uh, I don't travel in first class all the time, but I just happened to be in first class that day. And uh, I'm sitting writing some music, and uh, you know, um, I see a guy, a guy starts up a conversation where he's looking at my music, and um, I'm like, uh, oh, this is, a, he finally said his name was Chris Christofferson. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and when I mentioned that I went to Pomona, all of a sudden he was my new best friend. <laughs> uh, these are the kind of people you meet here at Pomona. I have another friend, James Newton, who actually helped me to uh, get through a very difficult far piece because I couldn't I couldn't uh, play my saxophone for the audition because it's not really a classical instrument so I, you know I had a lot of problems with just getting in uh, so James he coached me thank you James for coaching me through that far I would have never made it <laughs> um, and it's just it's just amazing how the thing that I think that distinguishes me from other people uh, is my creativity and originality. Inside of each one of you, I imagine that there's, there's something that's about, there's something with you that's different than others. And I always try to tell my students to figure out what that is and just feed that because that's what's going to take you to a higher place. I remember once I got a phone call from, a, from France. I was in New York. And uh, it's a French guy on the line. He says, Mr. Murray, this is Jacques Cousteau. I said, okay, I heard of him. <laughs> I'm like, how did he get my number? <laughs> well, as it turns out, he wanted me to, he had heard uh, me play the bass clarinet. And uh, he said that my bass clarinet was talking to his wells in the octo range. I said, okay, yeah, that makes sense, you know. <laughs> and so, uh, anyway, in one of his documentaries, you can hear my bass clarinet and talking to his wells, I guess. Anyway, I just really want to say thank you to all of you out there, um, family and friends, and happy Mother's Day, Verna, of my wife Valerie, Jamie, Janice, all you mothers out there. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Pomona College. Thank you.